I've been wanting to spawn NPCs with their own logic and pawn data for a while now. And I finally found out a workflow that works for me and I wanted to share here. In this tutorial, we'll be making a spawner uh, that you can define the pawn data, uh, the team, the behavior and controller and other settings like how many NPCs to create and if they should respawn and how long it takes for them to respawn. Um, so this is pretty useful for spawning random NPCs or AI in your world or having, uh, let's say, like a, an event that happens and a bunch of AIs are spawned. So yeah, so these, just for an example, these two, I sent them to spawn a mannequin NPC, which is uh, pretty much just an NPC with the Unreal 4 mannequin. And it's pretty interesting to watch them fight. And it doesn't replace the current bot creation logic. But yeah, whenever they die, uh, they will respawn in one second on their pad. So yeah, it can get pretty he hectic, especially when there's a lot of players and there's a lot of bots. Uh, but it's been it's been quite fun. Um, so yeah, this will be a part one of I think uh, three parts. So this one I will just cover uh, pretty much creating the the spawner. The second part I'll cover uh, creating an actual team for the NPCs uh, that won't be considered whenever the players are spawned uh, and won't have like its own uh, scoring. And the the third part. I'll cover handling pawn data that is for Lara characters with abilities um, so that don't have any player state and whose uh, ability system lives on the character itself. So that's the route I decided to take for the NPCs in my game because it, it was a little overkill to have them have uh, a player state. Starting from a fresh 5.2 Lyra project, I just called my project AI Spawner. Let's go ahead and navigate to our favorite map, so L Shooter Gym. All the data and logic for spawning bots is actually inside the experience. So go ahead and navigate to your world settings. And then in the default gameplay experience, uh, this is your gameplay experience, so just the shooter game elimination. So I'm going to navigate to it. Uh, and then just double click to open it. To hide the Windows taskbar, you can press Shift F11 and it will maximize your editor, which is pretty nice. The sh shooter game elimination is a Lyra experience definition. For the AI spawning, uh, their AI pawn is actually defined by the default pawn data. And bo both the players and the AI use the uses this uh, pawn data and this is the one that has all the abilities and this pawn data is the one that has the pawn class to spawn uh, the abilities to give the input and the camera so the input and camera are not that useful for the ai unless you want to possess them or unless they start being possessed by a late joining player or someone that dropped out and as for the teams uh, both the AI and the players uh, populate are populated inside those teams and those are set up by the experience uh, action to add the component uh, B team setup to teams. Uh, so this action just adds this component to the Lyra game state. And so let's just navigate to that one and I will just minimize this a little bit. Okay. Okay, so whenever this component is added, uh, it creates these two teams. So the red, the blue team, uh, we could also add another team. So yeah, let's just add a green team. Okay. And then the rules for how each player is added to the teams is actually defined in the team spawning rules. So there's, there's not really much in the blueprint itself. Uh, so uh, it pretty much uses the default parameters of this uh, C++ class. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that one. And I'm going to generate the project. So yeah, I won't go too much into details. Uh, but all that we need to know is that this uh, class, it just overrides uh, on choose player start. Uh, so 
the player start is these guys right here. Um, so it just basically chooses the player start uh, based on who's close to us and who already spawned. And if they're our enemy, then it will choose uh, the furthest default player start. So yeah, let's go ahead and play now that we have uh, three teams. And speaking of which, if we have three teams, we probably just uh, we, we could just make a new Lyra team creation component, uh, or we can rename this to three teams. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave it this way. If I play... Okay, so we have some uh, players on, on the green team, the red team, and a blue team. So it essentially tries to uh, give, give player a certain team so that it's fair. Uh, but again, when there's a uneven number or like there's a number that doesn't match the amount of teams, then we'll definitely have some unfairness that's going on. And then when I press tab, I can see uh, my stats. Uh, so one thing to note is that the shooter experience, it doesn't handle a third team. So that's why you only see the red team and blue team. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. And then I'm going to... Uh, just delete that third team. So, bye bye, green team. Okay. And then you saw that there were three other bots that were spawned, even though I'm I'm just one player. Uh, so that is actually set up back to your elimination experience. And then the the last component that we want to look at is the actual shooter bot spawner uh, so this component again is added to the lyra game state and let's just navigate to it okay so this is the actual component the the component that spawns the bots uh, and it determines how many bots we want to create and it determines which uh, controller class is is used and it also chooses the bot names and yeah, so the, these names are the ones that will show up on the uh, board whenever you press tab. And uh, these these guys, the guys and gals, they persist all the time. So uh, Manny will always be Manny uh, in the player state, even though its pawn is, is respawned and destroyed a bunch of times. Um, so you could say their soul moves on. Yeah, so if we change this to zero bots, It'll be a very lonely experience. So you'll just be alone. Uh, but then if you switch, uh, if you add more players and it will play as a listen server. So I have a server and client. So I'll have two. And same as the AI, uh, the players, they make sure to choose the right amount of teams uh, so that it's fair. Um, yeah, and the actual teams, they're chosen. Uh, I can show that. So the logic for choosing which team you're on is in the Lyra team creation component. So I'm going to just click on that. And then basically it's in, it, it tries to get the least populated team. And it, uh, it calls server choose team for player. Um, so Essentially, if you're just a spectator, it doesn't really give you any team. If not, it essentially just gets the least populated team ID and it gives you that team. And that logic is called on player initialized. And also on the experience loaded. Uh, so it, it Essentially, when your experience is ready, it tries to assign every player to the respective teams. The other one, server choose player for team, is on player initialized. Uh, so that's essentially just, it, it just waits uh, for late joiners or pretty much it just listens for new players that are logging in and then it will choose the right team for them. The brain or the, the behavior that all your AIs will be doing is again in the shooter bot spawner, uh, which we already have open. 
yeah so that's the ai controller and i will navigate to it and let's go ahead and open it um so yeah so this one whenever it begins play it waits for the experience to be ready and then it runs this uh behavior tree trying to spawn an ai without uh, the the game state or an ai that's not the default pawn data is not possible out of the box um, so this is what this tutorial will be about let's minimize all of this let's go ahead and create a new class um, so navigate to tools new c++ class and then uh, we want our spawner to just be an actor so we can place it in the world or it can also be spawned in the world yeah and then just make sure to use uh to, to change it to lyra game and then we'll call this one npc spawner because it's uh, pretty much a well, non-player character spawner and they're not meant to be possessed by players let's let's go ahead and create a new folder and just call it npc uh, we'll, we'll add more classes in there in the part two and three of this video series and let's uh, create this class Okay, so we have our two, uh, we have the header file and the body file, and let's just copy over the code from the GitHub. Um, so there you go. And then the same for the body. I'm just pressing Control A, Control V to paste over everything. Um, so this is code that I wrote, and it's uh, it's very similar to the Lyra brought cre creation component. Uh, but it's not a component, it's just an actor, and uh, it'll allow us to set a, a bunch of different properties so that uh, we have more control over what we spawn um, and where. And it, it, it basically just uses these as spawning points instead of uh, player starts. Pretty much all it does is that uh, when it begins play, uh, it, it waits for the experience to be ready, and then it creates all your NPCs, uh, which is again pretty similar to the uh the bot creation component um and whenever we create an npc the ordering was was very interesting to try to figure out uh because first i i wanted to actually use the pawn data from the spawner not the default pawn data from the experience um so yeah we we spawn the class and then if we have if we specified a different controller class uh then before finishing spawning the actor, we set the AI class um, and we also set the pawn data so it's it's ready uh, for uh, whenever anything else is initialized from it. It's got to be set there uh, because as soon as you uh, call to spawn the default controller, that's essentially what it does and it also calls on possess. Um, and then if we have if we specify a behavior tree to run, then we set it to run that behavior tree. So the the new controller that we create, we could remove the logic that was there for running the behavior tree that's set up in the blueprint. So this is, again, this is optional because uh, if, if you already have a behavior tree or none of them, uh, then you can just do it in, in the blueprint itself. Next part is I needed a way to get that data the way we set our pawn data is that the pawn extension component has the right data i needed to modify the game modes get pawn data for controller um, so go ahead and navigate to lyra game mode okay and then whenever we call this get pawn data for controller uh first thing is that we actually want to see if our extension component already has pawn data um, so uh, so that we get the right pawn data that we mean to spawn um, so yeah my github code has the entirety of the function uh, but really what you need is just this chunk here and again you'll notice i i surround these changes with game change so where game is the name of your game uh, just so I know whenever updating my Lara, uh, I know which changes I want to re-add or consider. So, so it's less less painful of a merge. We need our Lara player state to register to this new pawn data if it's already set up. Both the players and the AI use the Lara player state. 
So that one was also a tricky one to try to figure out. So yeah, just navigate to Lyra player state. Okay, and then after the post initialize components, um, you can paste that code. Okay, so um, I just created a new function just to register to the experience loaded. And then you can also paste in uh, right below your pawn data. Uh, so this will all help with setting the right pawn data so that this will be the same as the pawn extension component if it's already set. Um, yeah, so navigate to the body file. So Alt O for me because I have ReSharper and Writer and it's amazing. In that one, we want to change how the experience is loaded. So what was happening is that even though I was setting in my pawn extension component that I wanted a certain pawn data, uh, this was being called before the player state had the pawn. Yeah, so the, the, whole, the whole order was not working for me. So yeah, so you can go ahead and delete this whole uh, segment here and we go we're going to extract that and have it in our new function okay okay so it's it's pretty much the same code um and then we can just delete that and i left a note there also so we can paste that note here um, just to show that we move that logic over here yeah so the next part is that we need to call this when the pawn is ready and at this point here, the player state has a pawn and that pawn extension is ready. Okay, so the actual last part of this puzzle is we need to call this function so that it can actually call on experience loaded and it can get the correct pawn data and then set the pawn data, which in turn sets the abilities and everything. Um, so it's very important that it has the right data. Um, yeah, so uh, go ahead and navigate to your Lyra character. Oh, uh, the body file and search for possessed by. Okay, so at this point we have a controller. Uh, we are ready. Uh, we have a Lyra player state. Um, so right after the pawn extension component, handle controller changed uh, you can paste that piece of code okay um, so whenever you're possessed it'll make sure that first of all you have a player state um, and then if you're the server or you're uh, a dedicated server uh, then it will try and get that pawn data off of the pawn extension component and if that data is valid then it will set the pawn data so and else it will just uh, wait for the experience to be loaded okay so let's go ahead and close our editor so you see my live coding failed it's probably because i was uh, editing code as it was live coding and um, so i'm just going to close that and i'm going to close my editor okay and then i'm going to uh, debug the ai spawner project which is the name of my project all right, it just finished compiling. So now we actually want to start creating our blueprints and our spawner. Uh, I'm going to just navigate back to our map. Okay, so the bot has its own folder. At first I thought to put it over here, uh, but I thought that an NPC folder would make more sense uh, just to distinguish between, uh, I guess, bots that matter and persist and have scores and everything um, versus uh, just environmental bots or uh, spawned AI that is kind of a one-time thing or retriggerable thing. Um, so yeah, so essentially I just create a new folder. So I just called it NPC. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and create our spawner. Okay. So right click blueprint class. And then I'm going to search for NPC spawner. Okay, and I'll just call this one B underscore NPC spawner. Okay. So we have our spawner. 
And to save some time or to reuse assets that we already have, I actually really like these, the pad for the weapons. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. And okay, so I'm going to copy over uh, the collision and the pad mesh. Yeah, so just those two. Copy, and I'm just going to paste it here. And then I'll make the capsule uh, the parents, uh, just so it's it's easier to place. Uh, okay. And since it spawns the bots, uh, and their half height is 90 centimeters, um, so I'm going to make the capsule half height just 90. And then the mesh, I will add uh, just 10, so or subtract 10. Um, yeah. Because essentially, our bots are going to spawn right in the middle of uh, the root component. Okay. And another thing I like to do uh, for editor things or editor blueprints is I like to add a, a text, a text render just to say or write a note about what this is. Um, so I'm just going to call this one AI Spawner. Okay. And I'm going to just align that. All right. And then I'm going to put that spawner uh, right here. Sounds good. Okay. So when you bring them in, you can raise them up a little bit and press end just to sit them comfortably on the floor. Okay. And I'm just going to rotate this here. Okay, and then this text render does not need to be visible in the game. Uh, so I will just search for hidden in game and turn that on. All right, because we don't need to see it when we play. Uh, okay, I'll save this. So it won't do anything yet because it has zero pawns to spawn. Um, so I'm just going to minimize this. And, okay, when you click on them, now we have all these nice options for uh, what what we want to spawn. Uh, it helps if I go in the details panel. Uh, so yeah, uh, navigate to the details panel. And then this is all the information you can give it, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, team ID. Uh, as, you, as we saw earlier, there's a team one, two, and then and then that's about it. <laughs> so I will give them team one and then this one team two. Okay, and then the control class, uh, the Lyra shooter. Um, so if we give the Lyra shooter, um, it will it already takes care of its own behavior tree, so we don't have to put anything here. Uh, if you if we want to set our own behavior tree, we could uh, create a new blueprint for AI controller. And then we can set our behavior tree and it will make a difference. Um, yeah. And then for our pawn to spawn. So we can we can use our hero data shooter game. But it would be very nice to create one that's specific to NPCs. So we can see that they're different and they have a different pawn. So I'm just going to navigate to that asset. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy... Uh, the hero data and the ability set so that we can have uh, specific ones for our nice new NPCs. Uh, so navigate to the shooter core content and then under the NPC, let's go ahead and paste that. And I'll call those ones, oh, and I'll zoom in. So control scroll wheel. So this one will be our NPC data, mannequin NPC data. This could be anything really. And then the ability set will just be the shooter NPC. I guess this one could just be basic. Uh, basic. Okay. And so our pawn data, we don't actually need any input, so we can clear that. And we don't need the camera mode either. Okay. Our pawn class is the hero shooter mannequin. So what we could do is, just for a test, just to show that we can put any kind of pawn, 
uh, there's not that many options here for this tutorial i just want to show that it can be a unique pawn that doesn't use all the pawn cosmetic logic um, so let's go ahead and navigate to it and again we're going to just control c for copy and we're going to navigate to our npc folder and then this one i'll just call it hero uh, or b npc shooter unreal 4 mannequin okay and then we can go ahead and delete the pawn cosmetic component uh, which is still in use so i'm just going to delete this i'll just make sure to just put something in the hierarchy so i'm going to go ahead and delete pawn cosmetic component and i'll create a new custom event and then this one will just be set team color or set initial team color because beyond that it listens for the team to change so uh, that's another thing your your npcs they could potentially change teams uh, depending on what logic you want to do for your game so uh, right after you listen for the team um, we're going to just call our new function so our set initial team color okay perfect all right and then you'll notice that there's nothing here there's the mesh is, is an invisible mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a skeletal mesh. Skeletal mesh. Okay. And then this one, uh, we're going to use our tin plate, or I think he's just called mannequin. Yeah, so SK mannequin. And this one, it's nice. It already has a mannequin retarget. Okay, so all this animation blueprint does is it gets the pose from the parent mesh and it uh, makes sure to retarget during runtime, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so we have our new pawn that we want. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to our mannequin NPC data and let's choose that new pawn. So NPC shooter mannequin. So that could be anything. Uh, but I duplicated it from the hero mannequin because it already handles uh, a lot of stuff like um, changing the team color and the animation blueprint and all that. Um, so now we have our pawn data. Uh, our ability set, we can set it to be our NPC. Okay. And then our NPC ability set. Uh, we can remove is player because we are not, in fact, players. If you want your NPCs to die faster, you could create your own hero death and set the death time lower. Uh, so this is just to show that you you could give them really any ability set. Uh, but this ability set is nice because of the spawn in effect. All right, so let's go ahead and play. So this one... We could choose for them to just be a one-time thing, or we could choose them to respawn. And then there's just a respawn timer. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of bare bones, just, just to show what uh, you could do with these spawners. Last thing we want to do before we play is we want to set our new pawn data that we want. Uh, so the mannequin NPC data, and same with the other spawner. Uh, so then when we play, uh, they both spawn. And you can see that they're the Unreal 4 mannequin. Um, but a thing you'll notice pretty quickly is that they respawn on their pads, but there's also an extra mannequin that spawns at the default player cert. So that's because of the auto respawn ability. And really quickly, as you kill them, you'll notice that they just multiply and then you have a lot of Unreal 4 bots or NPCs. Um, yeah, and another thing you'll notice is that when you press tab, because they don't have any names and they're not persistent, uh, they show up as nothing um, or just an empty string. 
So yeah, it de depends on your game design. Uh, but if you want them to not show up on this, maybe there's a way. In my game, I'm mostly using this logic just to spawn NPCs. Uh, they have their own team, uh, which is the part I want to cover in my part two. Yeah, so let's go ahead and fix the fact that we now have a problem of overpopulation. Uh, so let's just stop this simulation and we'll notice that in our data, in our ability set, we didn't have the auto respawn because it's actually set in the experience itself. Um, so let's go ahead and navigate to our world settings and then elimination. Okay. And then under the add abilities, uh, this is where uh, the auto respawn is set. So let's go ahead and delete that from here because it adds it to everyone. And in the case of uh, these new NPCs respawning, we don't want them to uh, use that logic to respawn at the default player start. Um, so I'm just going to delete this. Uh, but then we got to make sure that we add it to our hero ability set. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we could go back to our ability, our experience, and then let's check out what the hero shooter mannequin has. Uh, so their ability set is uh, this here. Um, so we're going to just add an ability to them. So this will affect the control point as well. And any other uh, game experience that uses the ability set for the shooter hero. Um, so there might be some better solutions. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to have this one auto respawn. Okay, so now hopefully only our heroes have the auto respawn ability on them. And I could always double uh, double check uh, with the gameplay debugger. So let's go ahead and play. Okay. And then I'll just press the uh, apostrophe button uh, key. It's right be beside the enter key. Uh, so it always holds up a little bit. I'm not sure exactly why. But it comes back after a little bit. Okay, so I'm pressing one and two just to hide the AI and behavior tree. And I'll press three just to just to look at their uh, abilities. Uh, so yeah, I see that they don't have the auto respawn anymore. Uh, so those are all the abilities that were granted by their pawn data that was set on the spawner. So yeah, on top of these NPC spawners, we can still use the, uh, the bots that are spawned by the game state's bot creation component. Um, so let's navigate to that and we can, it can get crazy really fast. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go back to our uh, bot spawner. Okay, and let's, uh, let's spawn, let's spawn two bots. Um, yeah, so we got, we got two bots, we got two players and let's spawn. So yeah, let's just have fun and let's spawn four on each and they will try to adjust when they spawn um, so that uh, they will su succeed in spawning. Uh, but yeah, as you'll see, the uh, weapon spawners are going to become very busy really quickly. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to play. Okay, and we see uh, our, that's our player bot, that's a bot bot, so an AI controlled bot. And where's our other one? Okay, there you go. There's our other bot. And the rest are all NPCs. Um, so yeah, you could you could use this logic for, um, let's say an event happens and you get five robots. My next video is going to go over create, creating a NPC team so that uh, that team won't be considered by the players at all for uh, whenever they're created and they won't be considered as part of the leaderboard. This has been a, a great challenge to figure out how to have AI spawners with the Lara frameworks. And I hope this was helpful and I'm glad 
very happy to be sharing my findings. Um, so yeah, see you in the next one. And thanks for watching.